Now, it's a huge sense of relief. Now I can stop blaming myself. The words of one of the victims of the serial rapist, John Warboys, after she was awarded the right to claim compensation from the Metropolitan Police today. In a landmark ruling, the High Court said that the Met had breached the human rights of the victims by a series of failures in their investigations, which allowed Warboys to continue attacking women for six years after the initial complaint. Our Home Affairs correspondent, Simon Israel, has this report. For six years, John Warboys was free to pray as he pleased. He carried out in excess of 105 rapes and sexual assaults in the back of his black cab using date rape drugs and sedatives. Ten of those victims who went to police were simply not believed. Today, a High Court judge delivered the most damning indictment on an entire Metropolitan Police unit that failed to do what it promised on the tin. In his ruling, Mr Justice Green said, there was a substantial failure to train relevant officers, to properly supervise investigations. There were serious failures in the collection and use of intelligence sources. And there was a failure to maintain the confidence of victims and to allocate adequate resources to sexual assaults. For Warboys' first victim, this judgment frees her from the burden of guilt. She was not believed by police at the time and has blamed herself for all the victims he went on to attack. I can't describe the feeling. It's like a huge weight has been lifted. It's not really sunk in yet. Uh, it's 11 years of trying to put this behind me and finally we're there today. It, was, it wasn't my fault. The judgment is clearly laying the blame at the police's feet for the other victims. And that is such a wonderful feeling for me today. Are you now free of guilt? Yes, I think so, yes. I can finally move on and concentrate on my life and my family without this massive cloud hanging over me. And that is a good feeling. You weren't the only one that wasn't believed, were you? No, no. I think that's helped me a lot as well because up until the court case, I wasn't aware of other victims not being believed. I really thought it was just me. And hopefully, no other victim will be made to feel the way I've been made to feel over this case. This is an unprecedented case. Never before has a police force as a whole been found liable for an investigation's failures, liable for an untold number of victims, liable for a culture of disbelief among its ranks, and ultimately, liable for failing in its duty to protect the public. The events may have had their place in the previous decade, but today's ruling means crafting careful guidelines for police officers to follow is just not enough on the streets or in the courts. For the first time now, uh, the police are held liable for a failure in their duty to investigate. If, if this, if this uh, establishes a precedent, then maybe the police will, will at last realise that they can't just have uh, you know, policies on paper, they've got to do it in practice. But in practice, according to unpublished research obtained by Channel 4 News, the picture looks bleak for the force. A senior advisor to the Metropolitan Police has found virtually no progress has been made in rape investigations in the past 10 years. Detections, prosecutions and convictions have remained virtually unchanged, which in effect means a decline given the rise in reported cases. And as for attrition rates, those cases that are discontinued, they have gone from bad to worse.